The Earth's strategy for its own salvation is through machines. The Earth is like some kind of an embryonic uh, or fetal thing. And at the end of its gestation, what is happening is it is ramifying its nervous system. You know, while the naive are scanning the stars, our appliances have become telepathic. Some people won't even notice that it's happening because these large-scale processes can be described by many metaphors at many depths. But I'm telling you, I, I think this is what's going on. Where, where is the psychedelic experience in, in all of this? Well, um, it used to be called, or at one phase, it was called uh, consciousness expansion. And consciousness expansion in human beings is going to become uh, an absolute necessity. You know, you have the Hubble telescope inside of you. Uh, you have inside of you an informational gathering instrument that can give you good intelligence about things so immeasurably distant from this point that is stated in numbers and meanings. The information which is coming from the psychedelic experience as interpreted by Western people is primary evidence for the need for a major paradigm shift. If people were correctly presented with them and understood without hype and hysteria and hyperbole what this psychedelic enterprise is about, that we would win them to our cause, because our cause is the human cause, the cause of thinking and communicating and building and bringing uh, new forms of beauty, new possibilities for being. And this can be done without psychedelics, certainly, but with psychedelics it, it uh, is accelerating. And it has a feeling of not only of immediacy, but of the only way I can put it is, is correctness. It isn't, the, it isn't the lonely, neurotic artist thrashing towards some kind of self-reflection. It's the firm, guiding hand of a greater mind. The logos of the earth, I'm not sure. But a greater mind. I mean, art, true art truly is, truly inspired. And, and the, the muse, I don't think, was more real for Homer than it is for each and every one of us when we're in the presence of the mushroom, or Iowa, or the MP, or LSD, or something like that. You know, that giddy moment when all, all bets are off, all boundaries dissolve, the machinery of language fails, the adjectival wheel wells burst into flame, <laughs> and then you, know, you achieve orbital velocity, and are in the presence of, uh, of the thing. I mean, I think the psychedelic experience is the only authentic source of uh, uh, reliable contact with the new how itchy it makes me feel to think that somebody could go from birth to the grave without having uh, that experience. They can make of it what they want, they can denounce it, they can deify it, but uh, one should have it because it's, it's one of the compasses, the primary compasses of, uh, of being. All these intellectual ideas exist in the light of the sun of this unspeakable primary experience. And we can, we can draw a paint of sculpted, active, dancing, drumming, and never take anything away from it. Never define it, never occlude it. Uh, 
it's li- it is a miracle. It's like uh, having the presence of a deity. It's, I think, very hard for me to open myself up at any given moment to the full implication of how fortunate I am and how good life is in, uh, in the shadow of this particular tree. The point to be made here is that psychedelics are not an ideology or a position. They are an experience, and an experience is something that we have very intimately ourselves, so it's not something you can teach people. It's an experience, but it's an experience that I feel uh, people should have, and when I see a political system or a set of cultural values that are denying people this experience, then I feel like some kind of human rights abuse is taking place. I mean, it's a, it's a, uh, essentially preposterous situation, because what we're talking about here is the repression of a religious sensibility. In fact, not a religious sensibility, the religious sensibility. DMT, the most powerful of all hallucinogens, occurs in the human brain as a normal part of metabolism. Uh, it also is a Schedule One drug. When uh, so you're all holding, and uh, this might be the basis for some kind of. Uh, case to, to just show what absolute poppycock all this nonsense is. Uh, people have been made illegal. Probably they should have thought of that sooner as a solution to the drug problem. In principle, there's nothing wrong with drugs coming out of the laboratory, but in fact, uh, we don't have a large body of experience with these things where if you go to a tribal situation and they are using a plant in a traditional fashion, then you have your medical data which tells you that these uh, plant substances don't cause uh, mental retardation, birth defects, uh, Parkinson's syndrome. In other words, these human populations that have used these things shamanically have used tested a number of these substances and they are among the most powerful of all the psychedelics known. So you're not limiting the depth of your experience by concentrating on the traditional botanically derived substances.